If you watched any of my content, you probably know I'm a big fan of Calgary and I love living here. And while most of my videos make Calgary out to be a wonderful place to live, the truth is like any city, there are some things that aren't so great. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my brutally honest opinion on what I hate most about Calgary. So if you are considering moving here, make sure to watch, especially the last one I'm gonna talk about, as that's what I find people complain about the most. Before we get started, if you get any value out of this video and wanna stay up to date with all things Calgary, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as over 90% of my 10,000 monthly viewers are currently not subscribed. If you're not ready to commit that far yet, a like would be greatly appreciated. Now, without further ado, let's talk about what people hate the most about Calgary. Number one on our list is the long, cold winter months. If you watch some of my other videos, you might have heard me talk about how Calgary is the sunniest city in Canada. While that may be true, the fact is, when you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you are susceptible to some long, cold, dark, snowy, depressing, and did I say long winters? Sure, I'm looking at the negatives of the winter months, but living in a climate like that for more than half the year isn't for everyone, and that is something to be mindful of if you are considering moving here. Well, winter doesn't technically start until December 21st, according to the calendar. When you live in Alberta, it can start to feel like winter as soon as October, with snow coming and going until around December, when it finally decides to stick around. Average temperatures throughout the winter are minus one to minus 14, but it's not unheard of for things to dip below minus 20 or even minus 30 some nights. Sure, we have sunshine and Chinooks that help, but it's the short days that tend to take a toll on people mentally, with only eight hours of daylight during the peak of winter. The winter solstice, or the shortest day of the year, sees the sun rising at 8.30 a.m. and setting around 4.30 p.m., which doesn't change too much through November to January. The snow and the cold tend to snick around until April, but snow is no stranger to May as well. That only leaves you with around four months out of the year where you're not going to see snow. Some years it's five or six, but it's no guarantee. So if you are planning to bear the cold winter months, make sure you pack a jacket, bring some coffee, and don't forget the vitamin D. Number two on our list is the lack of nightlife, and more specifically, the lack of clubs and places to dance. If you watch my pros and cons of living in Calgary video, I do touch on this one a bit. While this isn't something that necessarily affects my lifestyle, if you are someone who likes to party the night away, you might be disappointed with the lack of options here. Calgary is more about business, the outdoors, and good restaurants. If you are looking to go bar hopping with some friends, you might find better options up north in Edmonton. That's not to say that there are no places here to get your dancing fix, but your options are quite limited. And number three on our list is the bipolar dry weather. This might be the one that shocks people the most when they move here. The weather can be extremely dry, especially if you're not used to it. It's not uncommon for someone who's new to Calgary to get headaches or even nosebleeds from the dryness. A must have for any newcomer is a humidifier in the bedroom. You can thank me later for the advice. One factor that contributes to the bipolar weather are the Chinook winds that come from the mountains. Look, it, I'm no meteorologist, so I'm not gonna sit here and try to explain how Chinook winds work, but the way they've been described to me is dry, warm winds that develop and come from the mountains to the west of Calgary. They can shift the temperature as much as 20 degrees in a single day. While this can feel like a blessing on a cold winter day, they are also a large factor on why the air is so dry and can be attributed to people getting migraines and headaches. Not only is the weather extremely dry, but it's also unpredictable and a little bipolar. Calgary is no stranger to seeing all four seasons in one day. Just the other day, we woke up to two inches of snow, followed by a beautiful plus 20 day full of sunshine, and then we even had an evening of rain and fog. On top of that, Calgary is fairly spread out, so it could be snowing in one area of the city and sunny in the other. You never know what kind of weather you're gonna get, especially during these spring and fall months. On top of that, Calgary is susceptible to hailstorms with a few bad ones happening in recent memory that have caused significant damage to residents' homes and vehicles. They don't happen often, so it's not necessarily something to be worried about on a daily basis, but when they do, like I said, they can cause significant damage. Next up is the downtown. Well, there tends to be a mixed feeling to the downtown skyline itself with a diverse style of architecture throughout the downtown core, Calgary's large cluster of high rises 
has been said to punch above its weight class for the city of its size. There are some glaring negatives to the downtown core, however. First and foremost is the fact that currently 30% of office space remains vacant. That's even with the first quarter of 2022 showing positive signs as it was the first time we have seen this number trend in the right direction since the pandemic started. With that said, the downtown business core can feel quite empty after business hours or during weekends. Don't get me wrong, there are still some very vibrant spots like 17th Ave, 4th Street, Stephen Ave, and Princess Island Park, but outside of those areas, it can often feel like a ghost town after business hours. This is even more so due to the large commuting population we have here as more and more people are choosing to move to the newer suburb communities. The negatives of downtown don't stop there. Downtown Calgary is notorious for expensive parking, so if you are one of those people commuting to work every day, be mindful of the extra monthly cost of parking that comes along with that and don't think you can get away with parking either because parking tickets are heavily enforced here. Additionally, since the pandemic, we have seen an increase in the homeless population and drug use. It's nowhere near the severity that you see in other larger cities, but it is something that has been quite noticeable over the past two years and is a little unfortunate. In general, Calgary is a very safe and clean city, but there are a few areas downtown that you'll want to try to avoid. Number five on our list is the road and the road infrastructure. Calgary is very spread out and built for residents to rely on cars. With that said, there are some negatives that come along with that. First and foremost, if you do not own a vehicle, getting around the city can be cumbersome as our transit system is not the most extensive. While traffic tends to flow rather smoothly, the city is quite spread out, which means you may spend lots of time driving from one place to another. Traffic can also get quite congested, especially in a few specific areas, which are not only prone to traffic jams and delays, but are frequent spots for accidents as well. On top of that, half the here you'll be driving in snow-filled streets with plenty of ice and dirt building up through the winter causing lanes to be obstructed and slowing traffic flow down. If you think things get better in the summer, you'll be sadly mistaken as this is the city's time to handle road upkeep and construction. Expect to see road crews working throughout the city through the entirety of summer, causing more congestion as more and more lanes are closed off during this time. Number six, and the bonus, the topic that gets joked about consistently here in Calgary is the city's bad habit to spend an absorbent amount of money on ridiculous public art pieces. The most glaring examples of this are the $500,000 art installation known as the Beaufort Tower and the $470,000 giant blue ring. Calgary is no stranger to public art with a never ending list of spots to check out and fill your Instagram feed with, but these few pieces have left a sour taste in many residents' mouths and are the butt of many jokes here. And those are the top things I find most people hate about Calgary, but I wanna know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, did I miss anything that you dislike? Do you agree with this list? Or maybe am I being a little unfair? As always, thank you for watching if you have any suggestions for new videos, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.